Rune 2. Then arose old Vinamoinen with his feet upon the island, on the island washed by ocean, broad expanse devoid of verdure. There remained he many summers, there he lived as many winters, on the island vast and vacant, well considered, wrong, long reflected. Who for him should sow the island, who for him sh the seeds should scatter, though at last the Parawinen, firstborn of the plains and prairies. When a slender boy called Samsa, who should sow the vacant islands, who the forest seed should scatter, Pellerwinen thus consenting, sows the, with diligence the island, seeds upon the lands he scatters, seeds up in every swamp and lowland, forest seeds upon the loose earth, on the firm soil sows the acorns, fir trees sows he on the mountains, pine trees also on the hilltops, many shrubs in every valley, birches sows he in the marshes, in the loose soil sows the alders, in the lowland sows the linden, in the moist earth sows the willow, mountain ash in virgin places, on the banks of streams at the hawthorn, junipers in hilly regions. This the work of Pellerwinen, slender Sapsa in his childhood. Soon the fertile seeds were sprouting, soon the forest trees were growing, soon appeared the tops of fir trees and the pines were far out spreading. Birches rose from all the marshes, to in the loose soil grew the alders, in the mellow soil and the lindens. Junipers were also growing, junipers with clustered berries, berries on the hawthorn branches. Now the hero Vinamoinen stands aloft to look about him, how the Samsa seeds are growing, how the crop of Pellervoinen sees the young trees thickly spread, spreading, sees the forest rise in beauty, but the oak tree has not sprouted, tree of heaven is not growing, still within the acorn sleeping, in its own happiness and joy. Then he waited three long nights longer, and as many days he waited, waited till a week had vanished, till then again the work examined. But the oak tree was not growing, had not left her acorn dwelling. Vinamoinen, ancient hero, spies four maidens in the distance. Water brides, he spies a fifth one on the soft and sandy seashore, on, in the dewy grass and flowers, on a point extending eastward near the forest of the island. Some were mowing, some were raking, raking what? was mown together. In the windrow of the meadow, from the ocean rose a giant, mighty Taurus, tall and hardy, pressed the compactly all the grasses that the maidens had been raking, when a fire within them kindles, and the flame shot up to heaven, till the windrows burned into ashes. Only ashes now remaining of the grasses raked together in the ashes of the windrows. Tender leaves the giant places, and the leaves he plants in acorn. From the acorn quickly sprouting grows the oak tree tall and stately from the ground enriched by ashes. Newly raked by water maidens spread the oak tree's many branches round itself a broad corona raises it from above the cl storm clouds. Far it stretches out its branches, stops the white clouds in their courses. With its branches hides the sunlight. With its many leaves, the moonbeams and the starlight dies in heaven. Vinamoinen, old and trusty, though a while and thought a while and well considered how to kill the mighty oak tree, first created for his pleasure, how to fell the tree majestic, how to top its hundred branches, sad the lives of man and heroes, sad the homes of ocean dwellers. If the sun shines not upon them, if the moonlight does not cheer them, if there is, is there not some mighty hero? Was there never born a giant that can fell the mighty oak tree, that can lop its hundred branches, Vinamoinen deeply thinking, spake these words, soliloquizing, Cape, daughter of the ether, ancient mother of my being, Luanator, my nurse and helper, loan to me the water forces, great the powers of the waters, loan to me the strength of oceans to upset this mighty oak tree, to uproot this tree of evil, that again may shine the sunlight, 
that the moon once more may glimmer. Straightway rose a form from oceans, rose a hero from the waters, nor belonged he to the largest, nor belonged he to the smallest. Long was he a man's forefinger, taller than the hand of woman, on his head a cap of copper, boots upon his feet were copper, gloves upon his hands were copper, and, his stri and its stripes were copper colored, belt around him made of copper, hatchet in his belt was copper, and the handle of his hatchet was as long as hand of woman. On a finger breath the blade was, of a finger's breadth the blade was. Then the trusty Vinamoinen thought a while and well considered, and his measures are as follows. Art thou, sir, divine or human? Which of these thou only knowest? Tell me what thy name and station. Very like a man thou looketh hath the bearing of a hero. Thou, the though the length of man's first finger, scarce as tall as hoof of reindeer, then again spoke Vinamoinen to the form from out the ocean. Verily, I think the human of the race of pygmy heroes might as well be dead or dying, fit for nothing but to perish, answered thus the pygmy hero. Spake the small one from the ocean to the valiant Vinamoinen. Truly I... Truly am I God and hero from the tribes that rule the ocean. Come I here to fell the oak tree, lop its branches with my hatchet. Vinamoinen, old and trusty, answers thus the seaborn hero. Never hast thou force sufficient, not to thee has strength been given, to uproot this mighty oak tree, to upset the thing of evil, nor to lop its hundred branches. Scarcely had he finished speaking, scarcely had he moved his eyelids, ere the pygmy full unfolding, quick became a mighty giant. With one step he leaves the ocean, plants himself a mighty hero on the forest fields surrounding. With his head the clouds he pierces, to his knees his beard extending, and his locks fall to his ankle. Far apart appear his eyeballs, far apart his feet are stationed, farther still his mighty shoulders. Now begins his axe to sharpen quickly to an axe, he wets it. Using six hard blocks of sandstone and a softer whetstone, seven straightway to the oak tree turning. Thither stalks the mighty giant, within his raiment long and roomy, flapping in the winds of heaven. With his second step he totters on the land of darker color, with the third stop firmly planted. Reaches he the oak tree's branches, strikes the trunk with sharpest hatchet, with one mighty swing, he strikes it. With a second blow, he cuts it. As his blade descends a third time from his axe, sparks fly. Axe, the sparks fly upward from the oak tree, fire out shooting. Ere the axe descends a fourth time, yields the oak with hundred branches, shaking, shaking earth and heaven falling. Eastward far, the trunk extending far to westward, flew the treetops. To the south, the leaves were scattered. To the north, its hundred branches. Whosoever a branch was taken has obtained eternal welfare. Who secures himself a treetop, he has gained the master magic. Who the foliage has gathered has delighted that never ceases on of the chips some had been scattered scattered also many splinters of the blue back up on the blue back of the ocean of the ocean smooth and mirrored rocked there by the winds and waters like a boat upon the billows storm winds blew them to the northland some the ocean currents carried northland's fair and slender maiden washing on the shore a headdress beating on the rocks her garments rising there her silken raiment in the waters of Poyola. There beheld the chips and splinters carried by the winds and waters. In a bag the chips she gathered, took them to the ancient courtyard there to make enchanted arrows, arrows for the great magician, there to shape them into weapons, weapons for the skillful archer. Since the mighty oak has fallen, now has lost its hundred branches, that the north may see the sunshine, see the gentle gleam of moonlight, that the clouds may keep their courses, may extend the vault of heaven, o'er every lake and river, or 
the banks of every island. Groves arose in varied beauty, beautifully grew the forest, and again the vines and flowers, birds sa again sang in the treetops, noisily the merry thrushes and the cuckoos in the birch trees. On the mountain grew the berries, golden flowers in the meadow, and the herbs of many colors, many kinds of vegetation, but the barley is not growing. Vinamoinen, old and trusty, goes away and well considers by, by the borders of the waters on the ocean sandy margin find six seeds of golden barley even seven ripens kernel ripen kernels on the shore of upper northland in the sand uh, upon the seashore hides them in his trusty pouches fashions from the skin of squirrel from some were made from skin of marten hastens forth the seeds to scatter quickly sows the barley kernels on the brinks of kalu waters Oz and the Ozma hills, the lowland and lowlands. Hark the titmouth wildly crying from the aspen words as followed. Ozma's barley will not flourish, not the barley of Winola. If the soil is not, is not made ready, if the forest be not leveled and the branches burned to ashes, Vinamoinen, wise and ancient, made himself an axe for chopping. Then began to clear the forest, then began the trees to level, fell the trees of all descriptions, only left the birch tree standing from for the birds a place of resting where might sing the sweet voice cuckoo sacred bird and sacred branches down from heaven came the eagle through the air he came a flying that he might this thing consider and he spake the words that follow wherefore ancient vinamoinen hast thou left the slender birch tree left the birch tree only standing vinamoinen thus made answer therefore is the birch left standing that the birds may nest within it that the eagle there may rest him, that may sing the sacred cuckoo, spake the eagle, thus replying, Good indeed thy hero judgment, that the birch tree thou hast left us, left the sacred birch tree standing, as a resting place for eagles and for birds of every feather, even I may rest upon it. Quickly then this bird of heaven kindled fire among the branches. Soon the flames are fanned by north winds, and the east winds lent their forces, burn the trees of all descriptions, burn them all to dust and ashes. Only is the birch left standing, Vinamoinen, wise and ancient, brings his magic grains of barley, brings he forth his seven seed grains, brings them from his trusty pouches, fashions from the skin of squirrel. Some were made from skin of marten, thence to sow his seeds he hastens haste the barley grains to scatter speaks unto himself these measures i the seeds of life am sowing sowing through my open fingers from the hand of my creator in this soil enriched with ashes in this soil to sprout and flourish ancient mothers thou that livest far below the earth and ocean mothers of the fields and forests bring the rich soil to producing bring the seed grains to the sprouting that the barley well may flourish never will the earth unaided yield the ripe nutritious barley Never will her fierce be, force be wanting if the rivers give assistance, if the givers grace the sowing, grace the daughters of creation. Rise, O earth, from out thy slumber, from the slumber land of ages. Let the barley grains be sprouting, let the blades themselves be starting, let the verdant stalks be rising, let the ears themselves be growing, and a hundredfold producing. From my plowing and my sowing, from my skilled and honest labor, Uko, thou, O God, up yonder, thou Thou, O Father of the heavens, thou that livest high in ether, curbest all the clouds of heaven, holdeth in thy in the air thy counsel, holdeth in the clouds good counsel. From the east dispatch the cloudless, from the northeast send a rain cloud. From the west another send us, from the northwest still another, quickly from the south a warm cloud, that the rain may fall from heaven, that the clouds may drop with their honey, that the ears may fill and ripen, that the barley fields may rustle, thereupon benign benignant uh, Uko, Uko the Uko, father of the heavens, held his counsel in the cloud space, held good counsel in the ether. From the east he sent a cloud with, from the northeast sent a rain cloud. From the west another sent he, from the northwest still another. Quickly from the south a warm cloud, joined in seams the clouds together, sewed together all their edges, grasped the cloud and hurled it eastward. Quick the rain dro clouds drop their honey, quick the rain drops fall from heaven. 
that the ears may quickly ripen, that the barley crop may, may rustle, straightway grow the seeds of barley. From the germ, the blade unfolding, richly colored ears arising from the rich soil of the fallow, from the work of Vinamoinen, here a few days pass unnoted, and as many nights fly over. When the seventh day had journeyed on the morning of the eighth day, Vinamoinen, wise and ancient, went to view his crop of barley. How his planting, how his sowing, how his labors were resulting. Found his crop of barley growing, found the blades were triple knotted, and the ears were found six sided. Vinamoinen, old and trusty, turned his face and looked upon, about him. Lo, there comes a springtime cuckoo spying out the slender birch tree, rests upon it sweetly singing. Therefore, in this is the silver birch tree, left unharmed of all the forest, spake the ancient Vinamoinen. Therefore, I have left the birch tree, left the birch tree only growing, home for thee, for joy joyful singing. Call thou here, O sweet voice cuckoo. Sing thou here from throat of velvet. Sing thou here with voice of silver. Sing the cuckoo's golden flute notes. Call at morning, call at evening. Call within the hour of noontide. For the better growth of forest, for the ripening of barley, for the richness of the Northland, for the joy of Kalevala. And... I hope you liked it.